and banning Greenpeace from damaging, blocking or interfering with the waste pipeline. And next on Seven National News, a memorial service for President Kennedy and an historic balloon flight over Brisbane. Kid's bigger on dishes and he lasts much longer than unbranded products because he's so much stronger, that's Kid. Mm -mm. Kid for dishes, he washes up to twice as much and he's low on price, he's much better value and that's real nice, and that's Kid. Uh-huh. Kit for dishes. Scent for scent. Kit gives you lots more wash-ups than cheap unbranded products. That's Kit. Kit for dishes. Real value with the Lever and Kitchen money-back guarantee. This is one of the most popular chest freezers in Australia, but we think it's a little plain. That's why the new Westinghouse chest freezer has this stylish green trim, as well as this easy-to-get-out basket. And it's built right here in Australia to handle the toughest conditions. Holds a little extra, too. Got room for these girls? And we know what a freezer's got to take. The new Westinghouse chest freezer. Definitely a better choice for your money. It has pizzazz. Now all of Evie Jennings' homes have it. Pizzazz. It has pizzazz. When your home knows, entertain. It's on display at an A.V. Jennings display centre near you. OK, nobody leaves. Nobody who buys a pair of jeans this week at Just Jeans leaves without a $17.99 sweatshirt. Gratis. For naught. Nil. Nothing. A $17.99 sweatshirt from Just Jeans for zilch. Zero. Nix. Absolutely free. Nobody but nobody who buys a pair of men's jeans leaves Just Jeans without a $17.99 sweatshirt. Free. For nothing. That's it. No cash. You do not. Just what you want. Now more Seven National News and Yasser Arafat has been given three days to flee the Lebanese port of Tripoli or face death at the hands of PLO rebels. The rebels have surrounded the town and declared a ceasefire, which really is not a ceasefire, as Philip Hayton reports. We're at the front line now with the Arafat forces. The Arafat forces are this side of the green flag, the rebel forces on the other side. There's supposed to be a ceasefire of sorts, but as you can hear, there's plenty of small arms fire, and the battle in earnest could begin soon. More and more people are leaving the area to escape further fighting. Yasser Arafat has called on Arab leaders to intervene to stop what he describes as an imminent massacre. The big guns were silent as we ventured into the Badawi refugee camp, which is now firmly controlled by the rebels. We saw the bodies of several Arafat fighters who died defending the camp, the anti-Arafat forces are confident. They have Yasser Arafat just where they want him, cornered in a city with his back to the sea. If he's lucky, there might be a rescue formula to guarantee him safe passage out of town. But many of his enemies want him killed at all costs. Across the United States today, Americans pause to remember a president who inspired them to reach for a new age of peace and equality, but who died before his dream could be put to the test. Kerry O'Brien reports. President Kennedy's widow, Jacqueline, spent the day at a favourite holiday haunt, Hyannis Port, where she walked on the beach with a friend, while the media kept a respectful distance. The Kennedy clan went walking too. Brother Edward the Senator, sisters Eunice, Pat and Jean, and their mother Rose, before attending memorial masses. The Washington service was held at Holy Trinity, the church where the president worshipped. His daughter Caroline, now 26, presented excerpts of his speeches as prayers for the nation. For genuine peace, not merely peace for Americans, but peace for all men and women. Not merely peace in our time, but peace for all time. We pray to the Lord. With President Reagan and other powerful congressional figures looking on, Senator Kennedy remembered a wealthy and privileged man's compassion for the poor. He was an heir to wealth who felt the anguish of the poor. What he did and believed in will endure, and in the end, it will prevail. It's a remarkable eulogy to a man who served only three quarters of one term as president but he still has the power to touch and inspire Americans a full generation later. 
From North America, this is Kerry O'Brien for Seven National News. A pleasant barbecue lunch for a group of Japanese car factory workers has turned into a nightmare. 130 workers from the Mazda factory in Kasagawa were eating lunch when a propane gas cylinder exploded. The first explosion triggered a fierce fire and more gas cylinders exploded. 14 of the diners were killed and 27 injured, many of them seriously. The open plan construction of the restaurant allowed many of the diners to flee before they were overcome by the smoke and flames. It was Japan's worst gas explosion and a full investigation into the cause is underway. An elderly woman is dead after a four-car pile-up at a busy intersection on Brisbane's south side today. Mike Stewart has the details. At first it was hard to work out what happened. The VW finished up in a near impossible position. The truck it first collided with wound up several hundred metres away. A third car involved wasn't on the scene. But after several hours of talking to witnesses and checking all the clues, police finally solved the riddle. The VW, it seems, was travelling outbound on Old Cleveland Road and was attempting to turn right into Creek Road. The truck was heading inbound on Old Cleveland Road. The impact of their crash was enormous. The old VW ricocheted off the truck, slamming into another car and then finishing here, buckled and twisted. A 70-year-old woman died instantly, pinned to the seat. Her 74-year-old husband escaped serious injury. And although they were very shaken, no one in the other cars was hurt either. Brisbane's early risers would have received a pleasant surprise if they cast their eyes skyward this morning. For the first time ever, a hot air balloon took a leisurely flight over the inner city area to celebrate the 200th anniversary of manned balloon flight. France, 1783, the Montgolfier brothers launched the first manned balloon flight. It proves a smashing success with the French gentry and with King Louis himself. 200 years later, Brisbane people were treated to the same spectacle. And like that first flight over Versailles, it was a history-making event. Thanks to special arrangements with the Department of Aviation, this modern-day balloon was allowed to soar over skyscrapers where planes usually pass. The lovely lady piloted by Roger Meadmore won the World Ballooning Championships in France in September, but even after 200 years, the art hasn't been perfected. Today she was headed for Eagle Farm, but a sudden wind shift sent the balloon way off course, soaring over Stafford, Inogra and Strathpine, finally to land at Albany Creek in someone's backyard. You're watching 7 National News. Here's Mike Darcy. Thanks, Mike. Tonight on State Affair, are our prisons set to explode and is the state government adopting a dangerous head-in-the-sand attitude? Also, Medicare is in the news again and we raise the question...